What is up? This is your LA in a Minute, and smog is an unfortunate part of Los Angeles, but we deal with it because it's been around forever. But it hasn't. There's actually a single day, July 26, 1943, that's known as the day the smog came to Los Angeles and never left. Let's get into it. Long before smog was smog, there was an intermittent haze that would creep through downtown Los Angeles, but it went by different names. One such example was the daylight dim out, which blamed fumes from factories. But even as early as 1903, the rapid growth and industrialization of Los Angeles, combined with a natural climate phenomenon known as an inversion layer, which traps air particles, led to reports of haze over the city. But that sweltering July day was different. Smoke and fumes had descended on downtown Los Angeles, cutting visibility to three blocks. People were getting into car accidents. Eyes were stinging, throats were itching, people were coughing. The city had never dealt with anything to this extent, and they thought it was a gas attack. Now you have to remember, the United States was at war. Pearl Harbor had only been bombed two years prior, so anything was possible. When the attack was disproven, city officials pointed the finger at the Southern California Gas Company, specifically their Aliso Street plant, which manufactured butadine, an ingredient in synthetic rubber. Public pressure temporarily shuttered the plant, but the gas attacks persisted, proving that it was not the prime source. The air got worse as the summer went on, and it left residents with the realization that something had gone terribly wrong in their city, once prized for its sunny climate. The smog didn't leave and continued to get worse. Look up in the corner. That's City Hall from a block and a half away. Wow. At a certain point, visibility got down to a single block. People began to wear gas masks, even policemen. And this was before the Cold War. Smog was to blame for the bad air in Los Angeles. This is real, and I kept the caption, Wikimedia Commons. Angelinos wearing smog masks at a banquet. Smog masks! The city hired employees to walk around with pure, crystal clear air on their back to give suffering citizens a reprieve. Other, more enterprising types were selling clean air by the balloonful for 50 cents. The blame kept shifting around until 1952, when a scientist figured out that the very machine that gave us our culture was actually to blame for the smog. That's right, Caltech scientist Ari Hagen-Smith finally figured out that it was these mass-produced, big-bodied vehicles that were defining Los Angeles and spewing noxious fumes, making a mess of LA's iconic air. Catalytic converters were mandated and emissions were decreased on a per-car basis, but the cars just kept on coming. And the problem continued to persist all throughout Los Angeles. And though improvements continue to be made, Los Angeles is still the smoggiest city in the United States. And it all goes back to July 26, 1943, the day the smog came to Los Angeles and never left.